she has been in hair and makeup for over 25 years. She's had a, an amazing career. She's been nominated for primetime and daytime Emmys eight times, and she just has a ton to talk about, about the creative process from the hair and makeup side. Everybody give it up for Felicia Linsky. <laughs> Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I've heard so many great things about you, and um, we've been looking forward to having you here for the few days that you've been signed up to do this, and, the, and this is a real honor to have you here. Thank you. Um, hair and makeup. How did that get onto your radar screen? How'd you get started with that? Uh, it wasn't on my radar screen. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no. I um, My family, thankfully, was into the arts. We were third generation fashion. And uh, thankfully, my mother recognized my talent. <clears throat> so I was classically trained as an illustrator, painter, sculptor. Oh, wow. OK, so definitely a hyphenate. <laughs> I was a first cellist. Uh, and being around and growing up at a time that, you know, is referenced as Camelot, mm. you know, in the yeah. 60s, uh, beauty and design and uh, things around me were all about the arts. Right. So for me, I just wanted to be an artist. Yeah. And uh, it was a matter of figuring out how and what I was going to do. And actually, by the time I was 11, I decided I was going to be a medical illustrator. OK. And OK, I didn't see that coming. Right. Um. <laughs> Most didn't. And so I trained between the age of 11 and 19 to become a medical illustrator. OK. And in the meantime, I had uh, been in a beauty shop or a hair salon yeah. growing up practically every week with my mother. And, uh, you know, who had her wigs and her pieces. And every time I walked in there, everybody cooed over me. It was a positive experience, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so for me, I was like, well, there's something good here going on. Yeah. But I never in a million years imagined that that was going to be my future. So University of Illinois was where I studied for the first two years. And uh, it was at that juncture that I had decided that this wasn't the way I wanted to go. Yeah. I mean, I watched my mentor like practically pass out in surgery. So after I left the pre-med part and put that aside, I started to get back into theater and I started performing again. and. One thing led to another, and one guy happened to ask me if I could cut his hair. And I was like, well, sure. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and How one, hard can it be, right? Well, <laughs> you know, I've seen some botched jobs. Oh, I've had some botched jobs. So <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and so one guy turned into 300. Oh. And I ended up with an unlicensed following. Um, and from that, they started asking me to design um, hair and makeup for the theater in, okay. at Beloit. So I designed shows like Equus at the time and mm -hmm. a few other things. And through my one woman like photography shows. And so after all this came together, I remember my freshman year hearing seniors say, that they didn't know what the heck they were going to do when they got out of school. And that scared the piss out of me. Because I was like, what do you mean you don't know? You've had four years to figure this out. And I was already like, I'm going to be a medical illustrator. And I'm going to you know, rule the world with you know, Grey's Anatomy and what have you. And there I was a senior going, oh my god, I can't be a starving artist. What am I going to do? So I went to beauty school. Well, that really upset the family. <laughs> but I knew that I had to get licensed and give myself a sense of legitimacy so I could do things within the arts that would allow me to be self-expressed and pay for my loans as well as get on with my life and figure it out. OK, so when did you decide to come all the way out here to LA? Well, so while I was in beauty school, I, that's a full-time job, being in beauty school. And I had already been five years of college, and I had these loans, and they were already calling me to pay them back. So in beauty school, I went to start working for the Clinic Corporation, which meaning, you know, I became a counter girl. So um, 
the blessing uh, was that one day I showed up after showed up after doing a hair test of a pink strand on my hair for a new product line, uh, and my I don't know what she was some sort of t regional management for Clinique saw the pink strand and went you're out, and I was like really? wow really so those multiple sales really didn't matter. So it really, you know, I put the white coat down and I was like, I'm out of here. And uh, literally that was the best thing and the scariest thing that could have happened because it, I immediately called my first photographer. Huh. And I was like, I am a hair and makeup artist and I want to start building my book. And can you help me? And from that, I started pounding the pavement and introducing myself to photographers and um, eventually got an agent. And next thing I knew, I was in the fashion industry doing fashion print, commercials, infomercials, all because I was bartering for my work. Right. So I really didn't get paid my first 15 years of my career. I mean, it was really rubbing pennies together. Right. And, um, but it was because I put a lot of effort forth. And I did a lot of makeup, you know, tests. I did a lot of tests for people's books as well so I could get in turn a photograph. And then I got offered the opportunity to do my first independent film in Chicago from a whole a production that was coming in from L.A. And it was being directed by... Um, Dick Clark's son, Dwayne Clark. Okay. And I knew nothing about continuity. I knew nothing about anything, and I was made the department head of hair. It was cold winter days. I had a whole ensemble cast to take care of, and it was sink or swim. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there were a few tears. Of course. But uh, I made it work. Yeah. And that led to, you know, several more movies between in my Chicago days. And in 1992 of this week, which I'm now celebrating 24 years, I moved out to L.A. because all these producers and directors said, what are you doing here? It's and your anniversary. It's my anniversary. <laughs> I've done all my growing up here. <laughs>